The works exhibited in this exhibition were inspired by World War I era photos in Edith's album. Edith was my partner's maternal grandmother, a woman I never knew. Edith was born in 1897 at her family's farm in Mar, Ontario, north of Wyerton on the Bruce Peninsula. Edith's grandparents came to Mar in 1878, and the property on the north shore of Burford Lake is still owned by their descendants. Edith and her sisters were each given a one-acre property at the lake. Edith and her husband Harold built a log cabin there. My partner and I inherited the cottage property. I love this place where Edith grew up and where she came to spend her summer vacations. In layers of time, the sense of place can be strongly felt. By digitally merging the historic wedding party scene with my present day photo of the same spot, I am saying, I know this place. I've stood where the first photographer stood. I may not have known Edith personally, but I have walked where she walked. When I first started to look through the album, I realized the photos were fading. In order to preserve the images, I digitized them. It was then that I noticed details I had initially missed. For instance, when I first looked at the small photo used in Taste of Freedom, the washboard piece, I saw only a happy woman driving in a new car. But when I enlarged it on my screen, I could see that she was driving away from her husband who was trying to control a number of energetic children. I paired this image with a washboard. Women's work was hard without our modern conveniences. The new car would make her life a little bit easier. During World War I, Edith moved to Toronto where she met her future husband, Harold. Many of the photos in the Her album are from this time. In 1919, while living in Toronto, Edith became ill due to the Spanish flu pandemic. And now, a century later, we are experiencing another pandemic. When out for walks over the past two years, I've been taking photos of trees and close-ups of rust and peeling paint. I'm drawn to the beauty of weathered, time-worn surfaces. When combined with the vintage photos, the rust forms the sky and horizon lines, adding vivid background colors to the black and white images, all the while speaking to the slow passing of time. My work is encaustic. I paint with molten encaustic medium, which is made of beeswax, pigments, and Damar resin. Damar is a natural tree sap that raises the melting temperature of the beeswax and helps it to cure to a hard finish. Encaustic painting is done in layers. It is a process of building up and scraping away to reveal what lies beneath the surface. Each layer is fused using heat. I'll use a blowtorch, a heat gun, or an iron, depending on the effect I'm trying to achieve. Encaustic is a wonderfully versatile medium. I love the natural beauty of beeswax and the wide range of techniques that work with it. Encaustic can add an ethereal, otherworldly quality to photographs, and encaustic works really well with collage, as the wax medium can both preserve and adhere the collage elements to the artwork. Over the last year, as I've created this body of work, I've experimented with different photo encaustic techniques. For some pieces, I digitally combined my own photographs with the photos from Edith's album. I glued the printed photos to the wooden panel, and I then worked directly on top of the photograph, adding layers of clear encaustic medium, pigmented wax, and other mixed media techniques, including collage, pigment sticks, pan pastels, woody pencils, and book foils. There are a couple of final works that use photo transfer method. I printed the, and reversed the image onto the parchment paper and then burnished it into the wax, then lightly fused the transferred ink of the different methods, my favorite is to print the photo onto rice paper and then fuse the image into the wax with an iron. Rice paper is not made out of rice. It may also be called sumi or calligraphy paper. When fused into the wax, the paper becomes translucent and the image and colors and marks behind the paper come through. 